Hello everyone. Welcome to the talk. My name is Rishi Rajvatacharya and I'm going to talk about memory type reductions for some key encapsulation mechanisms. I'm going to start with the notion of a reduction. A reduction talks about two families P and Q. You can take for example P to be the family of cyclic groups whereas Q can be thought as the public key encryption schemes. Each family has its own security game, say the DDH game or the NCPA game in our examples, where they are hard to win against. The reduction comes paired with a construction C. C takes an element F from P and produces CF from Q. The reduction R ensures that if there exists any attacker A winning against CF in GQ, then the reduction with the help of the algorithm A can beat the function F in the game GP. As the algorithms are probabilistic, we measure the efficiency of a reduction in terms of success probability. We say a reduction is tight if for some success, for the same success probability as A, the reduction needs to spend approximately same time. Interestingly, the traditional definition of tightness that we have discussed does not take memory into consideration. However, memory consumption of the reduction is also a very important parameter. Consider a primitive P against which the base known attack works in 2 to the power lambda time, where lambda is the security parameter, when only constant space is given. However, if more memory is available, say 2 to the power lambda by 8, then the time requirement of the adversary suppose drops to 2 to the power lambda by 8 as well. Now consider the fu a function f from P and the construction cf. Suppose the adversary A breaks CF in the game GQ in taking constant space and 2 to the power lambda by port time. A tight reduction would imply that the reduction R would win the game GP against F in time 2 to the power lambda by 4 as well. As we can see, if the reduction R takes more than 2 to the power lambda by 8 space, then the reduction is meaningless. On the other hand, if the reduction takes same time as A, then the reduction breaks the security conjecture uh, of P. That is, it breaks the record of the base known algorithm for P. The issue is not imaginary. Many hard problems are indeed very memory sensitive. To remedy the situation, Orbach, Cash, Fish, and Kills in Crypto 2017 introduced the notion of memory tightness. In this case, we have a memory parameter in the reduction as well. We say our reduction is memory tight if in addition to the same success probability and the same time complexity criteria, the attacker and the reduction must have the same, approximately same memory as well. The natural question that, comes, uh, that arises is whether a memory tight reduction exists. In the same paper, the author showed that a memory tight reduction for existential unforgeability of RSA full domain hash exists. Their technique formalized the notion of simulating the random oracle by a pseudorandom function where the key of the pseudorandom function is sampled and saved by the reduction. In addition, the reduction rewinds the adversary once. Apart from this, all the known results about the memory tight reductions are either lower bound or impossibility results. The starting point of this work is the open problem raised by ACFK, namely finding memory tight reduction for the NCC security of hash shell Gamal KEM. Let us informally define the notion of KEM. There are three algorithms, key generation, encapsulation, and decapsulation. The key generation takes the security parameter and produces the public key secret key pair. The encapsulation algorithm, which runs on the public key, produces the ciphertext and the key pair C, K. The decapsulation algorithm takes a candidate ciphertext and produces a candidate key. The correctness requirement says that if C, which is input to the decapsulation algorithm is indeed produced by the encapsulation alg algorithm on a, a public key PK, then the decapsulation algorithm running on the corresponding secret key SK must produce the matching key. The security requirement says that given the ciphertext C, the key K is indistinguishable from a random element uh, from the key space. In this paper, we find memory efficient reduction for the NCC security of hash tail gamma. Our reduction works for two variants, namely the kramer shoop variant and the ECIES variant. For the kramer shoop variant, our deduction works for over all the gap groups, 
However, for ECIES variant, we require the group to have pairings. We then extend this result to the Fujisaki Okamoto transformations. Specifically, we consider the modular analysis from the work of Hoffens, Hovermans, and Kills from TCC 2017, and we show uh, memory type reduction for two variants with implicit rejections, namely FO and FOM. In addition, we could show a memory type reduction for a variant with explicit rejection as well. The variant was named QFO M part by HHK. Now, we recall the hashed Elgamal KEM. There are two versions, namely ECIES and the Kramer Schub version. There is only one, but very crucial difference among them. Anyway, the setup is the following. Capital G is a cyclic group of order Q, where Q is a prime, and small g is the generator of the group. The public key is g to the power x, a random element from capital G, whereas the sec uh, secret key is the small x. In this paper, we include the generator g as a part of the public key as well. The encapsulation algorithm takes g and g to the power x, samples uh, random y from zq star, and computes g to the power y and g to the power xy. It then derives the key k by hashing g to the power y and g to the power xy. It outputs g to the power y as ciphertext and e as, uh, k as the key. The decapsulation algorithm takes a ciphertext y with the secret key x. It computes y to the power x and derives the key by h of y and y to the power x. In the ECIES version, everything except the key derivation is the same. The key derivation is ECIES, however, hashes only the y to the power x, which is actually g to the power xy, instead of hashing both g to the power y and g to the power xy. As we shall see, this seemingly small uh, difference makes a huge impact. So first, we are going to discuss about the kramer schub variant. In this variant, recall, the key derivation function hashes both g to the power y and g to the power xy. In the usual reduction, the random oracle transcripts are saved in a table. However, this cannot be done in a memory tight case. The challenge here is to simulate the random oracle in the memory efficient way, maintaining consistency between the simulation output of the hash oracle and the decapsulation oracle. We need to be consistent with the output of these two oracles by maintaining a small state. The question is, can we apply the PRF trick? The first attempt would be to replace the hash function h by the PRF everywhere it is used. Namely, h of g to the power y and g to the power xy can be replaced by PRF of k evaluated on g to the power y and g to the power xy. However, this is not good. The reduction cannot simulate the decapsulation query as the reduction cannot find g to the power xy from g to the power y. How about dropping g to the power xy from the hash evaluation? This certainly helps in the decapsulation simulation. However, the adversary can indeed find collision from the hash query. Hence, the hash oracle simulation is not right. However, we note that things would have worked if the adversary was restricted to making only correctly derived hash query. Namely, it could have queried with only g to the power y and g to the power xy. Unfortunately, we cannot restrict the adversary to make only such queries. So we do the next best thing. Recall that in the Gary Fiedelman game, the reduction is given a DDH oracle. Using that oracle, the reduction can check the well-formedness of the hash queries. The idea is to puncture the PRF on the well-formed points. That is, if the DDH uh, oracle returns 1 on g to the on input g to the power x and y and z where y z are the inputs of the hash query then we are going to puncture the point uh, prf on those points now on those punctured points during the hash oracle simulation g to the power xy is dropped and is replaced by a fixed element of the group for example g the rest of the points are untouched now, from the decapsulation query simulation, the reduction can easily compute the PRF on the punctured points and it needs to compute the PRF only on the punctured points. So this solves our problem. We can simulate the RO for hash Telgamal Kramer Schub version in the memory tight way. This idea extends directly to the module U of the Fujisaki Okamoto transformation. Here, one constructs in CCS secure KEM from a 
uh, from an encryption scheme, which is one way against plain text checking attack. The same idea works here. Instead of the DDH oracle, we have the plain text, che plain text checking oracle. Thus, for the hash query, we can puncture the points M prime C prime, where C prime is a valid encryption of M prime. Similar to before, we can replace the message M prime by a fixed message on the punctured points. The decapsulation works perfectly. However, note that the whole thing works because the adversary uh, cannot compute the PRF on this k 0 to the power mu and c through hash queries for invalid ciphertexts. The generalization to u part is simpler. Here, the reduction has ciphertext verification oracle. The hash simulation is same as before. However, for the uh, decapsulation simulation, we can use the ciphertext verification oracle and return a uh, part in case the input is an invalid ciphertext. For UM, the underlying encryption is deterministic. Thus, there is no need to puncture the PRF. We can simulate the hash of M as PRF evaluated on the encryption of M. The decapsulation simulation simply runs the PRF. Note, like before, it is important that the adversary cannot evaluate the PRF on the input of its choice. Otherwise, the whole thing wouldn't have worked. The same idea works for UM part as well, where the verification oracle CVO is also available. Finally, we come to the ECIS version of hash tail gamma. Here, unfortunately, none of the previous idea works. The reduction simply cannot get g to the power y from g to the power xy. So none of the, uh, the trick of map then PRF idea works here. The challenge here is to simulate or produce h of g to the power xy in the decapsulation oracle simulation, knowing only g to the power y. However, we observe that we just need to, uh, to produce the same result and it is not needed for the uh, reduction to follow the same procedure as in the decapsulation oracle simulation as it did during the hash oracle simulation. For this, a pairing fits the bill perfectly. We simulate h of g to the, uh, h of g to the power xy by evaluating the PRF on e of g, comma g to the power xy and during the decapsulation simulation, the reduction can retrieve the same value from evaluating E on g to the power x and g to the power y. This way, we can make the ECIS reduction memory tight when the group admits pair. So finally, we come to the big picture, the fully secure Komoto transformations. We know that in the uh, modular analysis of fully secure Komoto transformations, there is a pre-processing transformation as well, namely T, which uh, fixes the random coin used in an encryption scheme by evaluating the message M uh, by a random oracle. The in CPA to one way PCA reduction uh, translates via PRF uh, simulation perfectly. This gives memory tight reduction for two variant, namely A4 and A4M, uh, where there are implicit rejections. However, we see that the transformations UPARP and UMPARP require verification oracle. In the paper, uh, we introduced uh, another module called V, uh, for which we could show a um, memory tight reduction from one-way PCA to one-way PCVA security. Fine, so to conclude, we introduced the map then PRF approach in simulating random oracle in memory tight setting. This uh, technique is quite simple and it seems natural for key encapsulation uh, mechanism proofs. Interestingly, as we show in the paper, it can also handle correctness errors. Many open problem remains. The foremost, in my opinion, is about the case of ECIS where on groups where no pairing is available. In a recent result, there has been an interesting approach by Ghoshal and Tesaro, who showed impossibility result for straight line programs in the generic group model. However, in the general case, where the reduction uh, can rewind the adversary, or the memory of the reduction can actually depend on the memory of the adversary, the cases are still open. Similar uh, open problem exists for the modules FOM and FOM part and FO part. Thank you.